back students so today we will talk about another interesting aspect related to dislocation motion so we now know that deformation plastic deformation in a material takes place by generation and motion of dislocations because we showed at the very beginning that if we were to assume that the whole plane sheared that would require a much larger stress and the stress observed is orders of magnitude smaller and hence it was theorized that there must be something like dislocations which were later proved to be indeed true now what we will show is that even our or uh, understanding that the whole row of atoms will move at a time is incorrect and what happens is that these dislocations move in steps and uh, the steps become larger and larger and encompasses the overall length of the dislocation and in fact that is uh, also how it is able to accommodate a dislocation which is not a straight line because ideally we were showing the ideal dislocation or the theoretical ideal dislocation would be straight line but a real dislocation is always a mixed dislocation which has curvature and all so that kind of uh, concept does not hold for such kind of mixed dislocation or curved dislocation and it will be possible only if we have steps taking causing the movement of the dislocations so let's begin so let's say that we have a plane like this and it can have a dislocation on the bottom side it's not coming out a straight line so let me draw it again it's like this or it is like this and if you are applying a shear stress on the plane which is like this then this dislocation would like to move in this direction and this dislocation would like to move in this direction so our initial understanding would have said that this whole dislocation would move from here to over here like this or this one would move from here to over here however now what we are saying is that is not the case what will happen would be something more like this so if we have this negative dislocation and it has to move it will move more in steps like this so it will have a step formation in fact it will be it can be a much smaller step than this similarly if we are talking about the positive burgers vector dislocation it is moving like this it will form steps so he this is the step that is getting formed and in fact after some time it may look uh, not like one step but it may have very varied shape so what we are saying is that these kind of steps may form which expands so this one moves in these directions at a very high speed and therefore the whole thing can move but even then it's not that it has to go all the way to the end in this case this these uh, steps are moving these steps th that have formed will move over here and this one will move in this direction and over a long length of time you may see something like this and here these steps are called kinks so here what we have is one kink that has formed here is another kink that has formed and the kinks move away from each other which result in the overall translation of the dislocation so the important points that we gather are like this 
process of dislocation glide takes place in steps. And these steps are called kinks. These kinks then move across laterally which result in average displacement of dislocations. So overall, what we understand is that kinks lead to the glide of dislocations, which lead to the overall deformation. Or in other words, we earlier we thought that this deformation is taking place by the shearing of the whole plane. Then we said, no, it is the glide of the dislocation. And now we are saying now not even the glide is taking place by the help of kinks, a small steps in the dislocations. And here is uh, again another video which will help you understand the glide and if you look at it closely you would realize that there is indeed uh, there must be steps getting formed because it doesn't look like the whole dislocation is moving at one step and this is again by given by Josh Kasher group this particular dislocation video which is actually obtained from in situ TEM. So clearly what you see in the video is that it's not that the dislocation moves just uh, one place ahead as a whole piece. And there, uh, its movement clearly looks like there are certain regions which are moving first and the other regions follow. And how is this happening? It is happening because of the kinks. So the kinks form and it very quickly at very large speed, they move across and cause the overall displacement of the dislocation. And that is why we get that feel that some regions move first and then the regions, rest of the regions follow. So here is a schematic, which uh, to show more clearly how a dislocation or in a kink in a dislocation would look like. And this will also help you identify what are the characters, meaning edge character or screw character of these dislocations the steps that are forming over there. So since this is a edge dislocation, so it is like this over here. And let me use a different color so that it is visible. Now, since this is a edge dislocation, so we know that the Burgers vector must be like this, which has to be perpendicular to the line vector. And now this step that has formed, at least here that we have shown at the very atomistic level, it must be at 90 degrees to this, which would mean that this section M has to be parallel to Burgers vector. L is our original dislocation line. So for this, the line vector is same as that for the original dislocation, which would be perpendicular to B. And now here N is the new place where the part of the dislocation has moved. And uh, therefore this one is also, would also have same line dislocation as that of the L section. So L and N must be parallel. 
And then we have not written explicitly here. Let's call this section O. This particular section would be same as M. So overall, if you look at the L, M, N, and N, so clearly for L, we know that Burgess vector is perpendicular to line vector. Burgess vector for M section is actually parallel to line vector. And for the n section, Burgess vector is again perpendicular to line vector. We should keep in mind that for a given dislocation, Burgess vector does not change. So for L, M, N, and N, for all of these, the Burgess vector remains constant. And this would imply that this is a this has an edge character, while M has a screw character, and N has a again edge character. So this small step that we see over here is uh, also involving screw character. So it already, originally we started with the edge dislocation, but the edge, but the step that is forming over here has a screw character to it. And this is how it looks like. And this whole thing will move apart the M section and the O section. So let me call this here O. So M and O will move apart and then the overall section would, uh, the overall dislocation would have some displacement. And like I said, after some certain amount of time, it may look a lot more jig-jagged than a simple step over here. And that is where you can, in a, at a macro level, it may look like it has a more curvature to it. So, So let's say this is one plane. So this particular plane, the dislocation after some time of movement may look something like this. Now this uh, kink that we have shown at the atomic level, it would be uh, 90 degrees, but it may also get rounded at a larger length scale. And why does it get rounded? Because this roundedness decreases the energy. So if we were to look at, uh, let's say, uh, extra half plane. So there is an extra half plane over here. And there are layers of atoms here, here, then here, and here. So there is a dislocation here. And it is uh, forming a step like this. Now, this is step. Now we will draw, we will try to draw uh, the profile of the dislocation from the top view where we are able to see the other planes of the atom. So it would, so these are the dark lines are the ones where the energy would be lower. So the dislocation line would like to lie in these. So the dislocation would like to be a little rounded, but that too will depend on the energy profile of the Pearls Nebaro Valley. So, for example, when the Pearls Nebaro Valley is shallow, that then the dislocation would have more rounded character. So, if you were to look at as we, as I said, these are the energy valleys. So, so these are the energy minimas. And let's compare when this is the Pearl Nebaro Valley was much more uh, sharp or uh, they had larger energy difference between peak and valley. So let me draw another. So 
So we are looking from the top and the dark lines are where the energy minima lies. And like I said, this time the energy is much more starker. So it will let's say it looks like this. So when it is like this, in that case, the energy, the dislocations would have less curvature. It, it still wants to have curvature, but then the curvature would not be possible to the same extent and it will be, it will have less curvature to it. So overall dislocation, reduces energy by eliminating sharp corners. This, uh, even in that case, the energy, the roundedness or how much it is able to get roundedness that will depend upon the energy barrier, the pulse Nabarro energy value. will depend on PEI, ERLS, Pearls, Navarro Energy Valley. So two things, uh, two important things we learned here about the jocks, actually a couple of things. One is that, jo uh, sorry, the kinks, the kinks are formed and they are the steps, they cause the formation of the steps which lead to the movement of the dislocation. And what you see here are actually what is will be called as double kink. So this is the first kink and this is the second kink. So where it brings it back to the original path, original dislocation. Then next point is that the kinks, would like to get rid of the sharp corners and this is done to reduce the energy. However, the roundedness would depend upon the pearls Navarro energy value. Valley. So when the energy value is narrow, then the dislocation would like to become, would uh, tend to become more rounded. When the pearls Navarro energy value is very sharp, meaning it has very high, large difference between peak and valley, then it will not have as much roundedness and it will quickly switch as you can see from one uh, minima to another minima and it will have less region or less length in the higher energy region as you would expect. So this is the step formation for the glide. Now we have also talked about climb and similar kind of steps we will find is also present in climbs and it is called jogs. Here, uh, when we were talking about uh, the climb, we saw that actually the dislocate the vacancies can actually move into the dislocation core, and you would see a small step. So, by very origin, climb involves step-wise formation, and therefore it can be individual vacancy or cluster of vacancies, uh, which lead to the climb of atoms, rather than whole row of atom moving up or down. or cluster of vacancies lead to climb in steps rather than whole row of atom. And from the climb itself, we know that it can be both positive or negative. So when the dislocations are absorbed or when they sink in to the dislocation, then it leads to climb up. And when the dislocation acts as a source, 
uh, for vacancies, vacancies are coming out, then the dislocation is actually climbing down. And in both cases, there will be nucleation of the step, which we, which we are calling as now jogs. Both positive and negative climb proceed by nucleation of unit step. And what is the name of this unit step? The name of this unit step is jog. So in uh, totality, we can say it is actually the jogs which are the source and sink for vacancies. When it is a source, when it is giving up, meaning it is climbed down. And it, when it is sink, meaning it is climb up for vacancies. So, first let me try to draw this, then I will show you a schematic. So let's say this is the extra half plane. So what I've tried to draw here is that there is a extra half plane and I will So we since we are talking about the climb so this is the dislocation and this is the glide plane the original glide plane Let's say there is a vacancy, which I will draw as cube for simplification. So let's say a vacancy moves in over here. Therefore, there will be a step formation and it will become like this. So this would be called a jog. This will also be a jog. And the overall dislocation line you can see has climbed up. And if there is a cluster of it, then let's say we have more than one vacancy is trying to move in. Then this whole thing would look like So now I will draw the dislocation line in a different color. So you can clearly see that this is now the new dislocation line and the size of the step has increased. And this would be called one jog. This will be called another job, uh, jog. And both of them are moving as and more and more dislocations and sorry, more, more and more vacancies or cluster of vacancies can keep moving in. Then these jogs keep moving away from each other. And the overall average height of the dislocation line has increased. So overall it will become higher and higher. 
if we were to look at it from a different uh, perspective, then this is how it would look like. So I have drawn extra half plane and let's say we have the other planes are like this. So these are our full plane and I will redraw it in another color. And these are the jogs. And this is how it would look like. So this is the original uh, dislocation line, which has moved up a little bit and then again, there may be more jocks over here and this would keep moving and eventually you may get a lot more complicated shape. So for example, in the end, what it may look like would be something like this. So on the top side, we have the extra half plane and on the bottom side, we have the missing plane. So this is inside a crystal and everything above this is the extra half plane. So what do we see here is that these are jogs and these are moving like this as more and more vacancy clusters keep getting absorbed or in this this part is if you look with respect to the original this is climbed down so this is a source for vacancy so the vacancies are coming out from here so at some places the vacancies are getting absorbed some places the vacancies are getting uh, released or it acts as a source and like we said that this is uh, activated by diffusion mechanism of the vacancies and therefore it is a thermal process. So it will be more supported at higher temperature, this kind of movement of dislocation line. And therefore climb kind of process is usually observed at higher temperature. So this is your climbing dislocation. And in this particular case, if you're, so now I will, uh, let's talk with respect to what will be the character of the dislocation, that steps, uh, different components of the steps. So let's look at this one. So here we have edge dislocation. This is the extra half plane. This is the extra half plane. And therefore the Berger's vector has to be like this. This is the original line vector. So this Berger vector is perpendicular to L. Now for the case of M, it is perpendicular to L, but also it is perpendicular, it is inside this plane, therefore it is also perpendicular to Berger's vector B. So the M is again line vector as is also still perpendicular to the Berger vector V. N on the other hand is same as L, so it is again the line vector is perpendicular to B. And then we have O which is similar to M. So overall here we can write L M, N, where L, for the L, we have Berger's vector parallel to line vector. For the M, we still have Berger's vector parallel to line vector, only that the line vector itself is now uh, perpendicular to the original line vector. So I will call it U2. And N is again, same as the original. So in this case, what we see is that we are getting all of them as edge dislocation.
and uh, say if O would be same as O. So this is uh, how the steps form in the dislocation by forming kinks when it is gliding in the same plane or forming jocks, which will be of, which will be steps when the dislocation wants to move out of the plane. And uh, like climb, jog would also be supported at higher temperature because it is a thermal phenomena. So with that, we have good understanding about the dislocation motion, climb, the first we looked at this, uh, the glide, which is the usual slip. Then we looked at cross slip, then we looked at climb. Then we also looked at the steps that are formed for the glide and the jog. And what we realized is that it's not the whole dislocation line moving at a time, but it is the steps that form. And then there is the steps move out, which lead to the overall average displacement of the dislocations. So we have learned a lot about the motion of the dislocations. So we will end this uh, chapter with this, with this understanding. Thank you.